Sales Crunch. Learn more, earn more. Um, so I'll introduce uh, our guest speaker, who's going to come between me and me and Jan, uh, who we didn't know about until um, early this morning. So um, ranked pretty consistently among the most uh, influential VC bloggers by the likes of, of TechCrunch, Mark Schuster in the back of the room here, who was so nice to give me that feedback in the middle of my presentation. Uh, as an entrepreneur who sold his last company to Salesforce.com before he turned to the dark side of VC. Um, he's gonna talk a little bit about, I think, the importance of, um, of a good pitch and a good, uh, a good presentation in the world of, of, uh, of the investment community and the entrepreneur. Mark, if you don't know, writes both sides of the table, which is probably one of the most widely read VC blogs next to Fred Wilson's um, ABC.com. Um, and also as a guest writer for, for TechCrunch and for Fast Company. So he's going to come and disagree with all the things I just told you and, and set Yan up for an awesome presentation. Mm -hmm. Mark? Thank you. I have to say, the only reason I wanted to correct you is because it actually changes the definition when you leave the U out, so I wanted to be sure it wasn't misunderstood. So um, I guess if I look at, well, uh, the five things that Sean talked about, uh, credibility being one of them, he's already done that for me. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to focus on storytelling. And this is a really fun story for me to tell because... Uh, I spoke today at Dogpatch Labs to a bunch of startups and people ask me what is the biggest impact on your career that helped you to be a two-time CEO that, you, that, that people don't know about you. So I had to think of a couple ideas. Um, and the story I told was that the most influential thing about uh, my experiences was being president of my fraternity. It's not what you'd expect someone to say. It was way more valuable than my economics undergrad degree. It was way more valuable than my political science degree. Uh, it taught me how to get a group of people to turn up to meetings they don't want to be at, to pay money that they don't want to pay, to turn up to events that I wanted to turn up to. We did charity. We had sports competitions, which of course we wanted to win, so we had a plan for that select who would be involved. Uh, we ran parties, I had to deal with liability, I had to deal with finance, all these things were really a grounding and I think you can't learn about leadership from reading, you only learn about doing. Next year I'm gonna write a book. Um, my book is not gonna be anything at all like the blog I keep, it's gonna be a series of stories about life, about the things that I learned and trying to use narrative to tell uh, examples of what I've learned. And one of the stories that I'm going to write about, I'm going to tell tonight. Because it was such a surprise for me to come in the room and have one of my fraternity brothers from college, who I haven't seen since college, Greg Solomon, in the room. And here's the story, and I don't even know if you'll remember this, you probably will. Um, I don't know why, like, you know, when you're young, you have ambitions, and you create these artificial ambitions in your life. And I just knew, for whatever reason, once I joined a fraternity, which I'd never planned to do, uh, but once I did, I just decided I wanted to be president one day, so I kind of <coughs> charted out the course of how to get there. And I had just come off being social chairman, which meant I ran all the parties, um, which is kind of a fun thing to do, actually. <laughs> and the next thing I wanted to do was run for vice president, because the best way to be president, I guess, is to be number two and to earn credibility. And, you know, coming off a successful tenure of running parties seems like a great platform to win the next election. And uh, the person I was competing against was Greg Sullivan. <laughs> and I came in uh, with, I don't know, a half-assed prepared set of reasons why you should elect me. You know, the kind of um, youthful, naive way of trying to convince or persuade a group of people of something. I want to be the vice president because of A, because of B, because I did C, and all this kind of, it's just what wasn't compelling. And what Greg did is he walked in and he sat on a table just like this, and he looked everybody in the eyes, and he just connected as a human being to all the people in the chapter, and he created this emotion in the room about 
a sense of purpose. It was almost like Ronald Reagan-esque, you know, um, a sense of purpose in the room. And he trounced me. It's the first time I ever publicly lost anything really substantive in my life. And I have to admit, I was mildly devastated. Um, not, not, not from a not from a sense of not being able to be vice president, but publicly losing. It's, it's, it's a hard thing, right? And um, what, it, what it did is the next year I decided, okay, well, fuck it, I wasn't good enough to be vice president, I'll just go straight for president. Um, the president, who I think was under your tenure, Dean Holter, called me up and asked me not to run. And he said, we've already got two very qualified people who are running. And I think both of them are going to handily beat you. And I think you're going to create a divisive uh, dilemma in the fraternity, like pulling a group of people away from these two people who are more likely to win. Um, I think you should run for vice president. And I said to him, look, I've done four or five things in the fraternity. I think I've earned the right to give it a shot. I think I'd be a good leader. I'm going to give it a shot. He encouraged me not to. So of course the three of us would run, and uh, if no one captures 50%, which are three very popular people, for your memory, Rick Morales, who now lives in New York, and Craig Hickox, uh, both very popular guys, uh, it's far more likable than I am. And uh, uh, so there would be a runoff between two of us, so the only question is who, who would be in the runoff. And I took it from the Greg Solomon School, uh, I came in and talked about sense of purpose. I talked about how when we were young, we all aspired to be leaders. And when we got more senior and became leaders, everyone kept talking about how the fraternity had changed. It was no longer uh, like it was when we were young. And we missed a trick. And the trick is that now there was this young group of people who looked up to us. They were looking to us to take the mantle, to be leaders, to set, uh, you know, their sense of traditions for them that they would look back on later in life. And we were the people who were going to create this. And that's what it's really all about. And I created a human connection with people. And there was no runoff. I won straight away. And they had told me not to do it. And so many life lessons. And the truth is, it, you did inspire me to do that. And you did change the way that I talk and present because I realized from getting my ass kicked uh, how dumb it is not to build human connections. Sales Crunch. Learn more, earn more.